Tech Division, thank you all for spending your evening out here with us uh, to discuss a project that was recently submitted to the county uh, for review. Uh, it's going through the public hearing process right now. I know a number of you have been engaged uh, with that process. Uh, so we wanted to take this opportunity to come out, uh, give you some background and history, and then, uh, of course, uh, get your feedback on this project uh, before it goes to a public hearing uh, next week. So uh, just a couple of housekeeping items. We do have a few sign-in sheets uh, floating around here. If you want to sign in, really appreciate that. Uh, we'll keep you guys in the loop on uh, different steps in this process. Uh, of course, if you do sign in, uh, and also the District 1 Commissioner Nicole Wilson is on her way right now. Um, so uh, she should be here shortly uh, to hear your feedback as well. We've got plenty of staff members here taking notes. Uh, just to, And the applicant team is also here to answer any questions you may have with them. Uh, but I'll go ahead and get started uh, in the introduction. My name is Eric Rosh with the Planning Division uh, and the Planning Administrator uh, who's processing uh, these applications. Uh, we also have Tim Hall from our Environmental Protection Division. Uh, and Tim, and how many was your last name? All right, I'm not even trying. Um, <laughs> uh, Tim also with our Environmental Protection Division, uh, resources here uh, for the conservation area, uh, impact permits and the things of that nature that you're gonna hear about a little bit in this presentation. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start by just uh, walking through a few of these slides. Some of this information is a little technical, uh, so we're all available for um, uh, questions at the end. Uh, first and foremost, we're here today because we have an applicant who's seeking approval of a multi-part development uh, plan modification to allow for 14 owners to have uh, docks on Lake Huckleberry. So that's the, the simple part of the uh, explanation of the request. Uh, further complicating it, there are multiple applications associated with this. Uh, first, there's a, a modification to a conservation area impact permit uh, and a mitigation plan. They're also amending the conservation easement, modifying, modifying a preliminary subdivision plan, which is the application that's going to the board on Tuesday. And if all of that's approved, then it'll be uh, in the replatting process, which actually formally subdivides those lots into the lake. Uh, the applicant does have the right to make the request. There's a process for everything in the county. Uh, there's no guarantee that it'll be approved, uh, but this is something that was submitted for staff review. Uh, and we're taking it through the process, and of course, there will be a public hearing in front of the board on Tuesday. Uh, there are some precedents. Uh, we had a similar request um, that was processed over in the Waterloo subdivision on Lake Hickory Nut, uh, and that was done in 2016. Uh, so this is following a similar path as one of those previously uh, submitted requests. Uh, so some background in history. Uh, this is the, the site plan. Uh, this was a subdivision plan that was submitted by a group called Colinar Holdings back in 2013. Uh, and of course, those 14 lots, as you can see from this image on the screen, outlined in red, did not extend into the lake, so they didn't uh, go to the wetlands or the normal high water elevation of Huckleberry Lake, which means they wouldn't be eligible for docks. Uh, the property was then flattened. The first was uh, 3D, which is the small flat at the bottom, uh, and that was uh, recorded in 2019 and consistent with the prior approvals. Uh, those lots did not extend into the lake. The 3C plat was submitted and recorded uh, in March of 2020, uh, similar to 3D. Uh, these are the 11 lots on the north, and those also do not extend into the lake. So what's been filed today? Uh, there's a change determination request that's in process that would formally extend those lot lines into the lake. So you can see that here on the screen. Uh, so you see the platted lot lines extending down into Huckleberry Lake. Uh, that was continued from a previous Board of County Commissioners meeting and it's scheduled to go back to the board on November 9th. That's going to be a full public hearing. So if you receive notice for this community meeting, you will receive notice for that public hearing as well. Um, and that uh, hearing will be at the County Commission Chambers uh, at 2 p.m. If the board approves this change determination, uh, then they will have to go through the replatting process and ultimately uh, extend those lot lines formally into the and now, let me just go ahead and pass it over to Tim Hole. He can give you some background on the conservation area impact permit, uh, the conservation easements, and all of the applications that the Environmental Protection Division uh, is also processing related to this request. So, and then once Tim wraps up, we'll go ahead and open it up for feedback. Uh, and we have the full team here to answer any questions you may have regarding this request. So, Tim. 
Thank you, Eric. Um, Tim Hall, Environmental Programs Administrator at EPD. Um, and my counterpart is Tim M. Um, Tim Madden Agopal. Uh, but you can just remember Tim M and Tim H. Uh, so as Eric mentioned, I'm going to cover um, more of the Environmental Protection Division's portion of this multi-part uh, process that uh, KHOB is trying to go through. Um, Starting back in 2013, UPD issued the Conservation Area Impact Permit for the subdivision. Um, you can see that uh, the lots are outlined in green and orange, and there was a, uh, what we call a Class 3 wetland. It's defined in code, um, Class 1, 2, and 3. This was a Class 3 wetland. It was 3.87 acres in size in the northwest portion of the subdivision. Um, as mitigation for uh, those almost four acres of impact, uh, they proposed a mitigation plan at the time that included preservation of 44, almost 45 acres of on-site wetlands. You can see outlined and shaded in green there. Um, that wasn't quite enough to offset uh, the almost four acres of impact, so they also purchased 0.27 mitigation credits from Southport Ranch Mitigation Bank. Those credits were purchased on October 10th in 2013. And then um, as kind of the final step uh, to finalize the mitigation plan, um, they recorded the conservation easements. The South Florida Water Management District also required uh, conservation easements be recorded. Those were done first um, in the fall of 2014, two separate easements to the district. Um, what's important to note is that those are recorded with uh, reserve rights to construct boat docks. That was executed by Daniel Trailer with Magnolia Estates LLC. And then in April of the next year, um, Patrick McNeely was KHOB, so you can see the entities are uh, constantly changing here. Um, by the way, the conservation area impact permit was issued to MI Homes. So just keep in mind, um, part, of, uh, part of the root of the issue here is that um, because of the changes in entities, I, uh, we, we, uh, the applicant could probably speak to this, but there was probably some confusion as to what the future um, ability to construct docks was going to be, uh, which has brought us to where we are here today. But um, so that last easement in April 15 was recorded without reserved rights for docks. So you can see we have two conflicting easements allowing different things between the Water Management District and Orange County Seasman. Here's an aerial photo of that total preservation area uh, outlined in teal there. It's two different tracks, which is what that dividing line down the center is all about. And then um, that brings us to uh, some actions that uh, KHOV undertook um, to try and fix um, this problem that they perceived that no docks could be built. So. Um, in January and April of 2020, uh, KHOV, as the community HOA, recorded quick claim deeds uh, from the community HOA to themselves with the intent of modifying several lots, uh, the three in the south that Eric showed you and the 11 in the north, from conservation view to lakefront. Then in July of 2020, EPD received an application to construct um, one dock from KHOB for the property located at 15640 Sweet Lemon Way. On August 11th, EPD issued that dot permit to KHOB. Um, subsequently, on September 23rd, the building permit from the Building Safety Division at Orange County was issued. That dock was partially constructed, um, but upon further review, EPD uh, identified that the application included inaccurate drawings indicating the property lines extended into Huckleberry Lake which, as Eric mentioned, um, property lines that go into the lake do con typically convey riparian rights and the uh, um, right to construct the dock. Uh, when the EPD learned of that mistake, a stop work order was issued for the building permit through the Building Safety Division. Um, and then those re other remaining 13 lots were all flagged in our database, uh, which if anyone submitted a dock application until this is all resolved, either approved or denied, um, staff will not, uh, staff will catch it, not issue any more dock permits. 
So here's an aerial photo of the, the one lot um, that did get the boat dock permit issued and it did get partially constructed. It's a little faint, but um, there actually is an access walkway through the wetland that was constructed, um, but no terminal platform has been built as of today. So this is the site plan that was submitted, which has um, led to staff issuing that permit. Um, in, circled in red are um, the uh, illegitimately extended, if you will, lot lines that went out into the lake that led staff to believe that they had riparian rights. Um, in fact, the property lines stopped at the blue lines, which is at the edge of the upland buffer of the conservation easement. Um, but staff didn't catch that at the time. Um, so, uh, in order to try and remedy um, the problem from Chaos's perspective, uh, on April 19th of this year, um, the owner of that conservation tract, um, both conservation tracts, which is Summer Lake Groves Community Association, submitted an application to modify that wetland impact permit that was issued in 2013 to replace a portion of um, the mitigation plan, which is a total of 3.55 acres of the on-site mitigation area located behind those 14 lots. Um, that, that is just one step in modification of that plan um, that's necessary in order to redraw the lot lines and allow, allow them to extend in the Huckleberry Lake to afford riparian rights to the owners of those lots. Um, by building, by the potential of building docks being opened up, that is not as valuable from a, a wetland functional value perspective. And so they had to offset um, that functional value um, by purchasing 0.07 credits from the Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank. So just to overly simplify it, those three and a half acres had a wetland functional value that would be diminished by um, putting docks through it, 13 docks through it. So to offset and make their original permit whole, they had to do something else. And what they elected to do was purchase some credits. Um, on, June, on June 29th, EPD issued that CAL, CAI modification. It was class three impacts originally, which did not go to the board and are not required to go to the board. Um, and so the modification also did not go to the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, and then on July 21, uh, staff received revised sketch and legal descriptions and a title report with a request to amend the recorded conservation easement to reflect that mitigation plan that had been approved. This is a graphic of um, the mitigation area, the wetland area. The portion uh, shaded in yellow is the three and a half acres that um, were approved to be uh, released from the mitigation component of the plan and replaced with offsite uh, credits at a mitigation bank. Um, so, just to recap, the issuance of that CAI permit modification did not authorize wetland impacts to the three and a half acres of preservation. It only remove that component from the mitigation plan in the permit. The wetland area behind the 14 lots remains protected under Chapter 15, Article 10. The conservation area of, that comprises that three and a half acres will be um, depicted on the CDR that's being processed and the plat. And plat will include standard language that no clearing grading alteration to the conservation area is permitted without prior approval of county and other agencies. So um, our office and the commissioner's office received some complaint about um, some clearing at that lot with partially constructed dock um, that was within the conservation area. Uh, we did uh, create a file and went out and investigated that complaint. It confirms there was some unauthorized clearing that has happened um, behind that lot with the boat dock. Um, and you may, you may be wondering, where did they, would, the, would the person have known? Yes, there is conservation area signage um, that was installed behind that lot 
um, as a requirement of the subdivision plan, uh, and those are actually required on every other lot line. Um, so EPD issued a notice of violation to the owner of track CC because the clearing actually occurred in the tract, not actually in the upland owner's um, ownership. And so um, we sent a violation notice to Summer Lake Groves Community Association that went out today, I think, um, and restoration of the areas of unauthorized impact, including the replanting of trees and payment of a $4,000 penalty will be required. All right, so last slide here. Um, the CDR was continued from October 12th, um, and that is uh, going to be reheard on November 9th. The proposed amendment to the county recorded conservation easement is still currently under review. It's not ready to go forward at this time. Um, and just so you know about the conservation easement uh, amendment process, those are typically uh, reviewed by the county's real estate management division along with EPD. And um, we have an ordinance that dictates whether it will go to the Board of County Commissioners or not. This particular one would not normally go to the Board of County Commissioners as a public hearing. However, our manager of the real estate management division does have um, the authority to make a decision to uh, take it as a public hearing if um, at their discretion. So. Um, some new information uh, that EPD received on this uh, item is that uh, the applicant proposed on October 25 uh, that they would keep the they would, they would keep the conservation easement limits the same, so they wouldn't um, they wouldn't remove the three and a half acres from the conservation easement. They would leave leave it as drawn and as approved. But what they uh, would like to do is um, to modify the language in the easement to allow reserved rights to build docks, which would align with what the recorded uh, South Florida Water Management District easement says. And then um, they also offered to provide mitigation credits for the footprint of those potential future 14 docks. Normally, um, only docks, if, if, you, if someone builds a dock that meets code and uh, it's totally within the allowed size, uh, mitigation credits are, aren't required. However, if someone wants to build 200 square feet larger than what's allowed or 500 square feet larger than what's allowed, there is a process for them to go through and request that. Um, if they want to do that, then we do require mitigation. So what the applicant has offered here is regardless of size, even if it meets code, they will provide some mitigation credits at a mitigation bank to offset um, the functional loss that's associated with docks and weapons. So um, that wraps up our presentation. And as Eric mentioned, um, we can either open it up for questions or uh, go back. Did you want to share? Okay. All right, thank you, Tim. And I, before we start taking questions, you know there's a lot of information, a lot of acronyms. Um, I, I did want to introduce the district commissioner, uh, Nicole Wilson, uh, joining us here this evening. Uh, she was the one who requested this community meeting to get your feedback on this request. I don't know if you want to say a few words. I, I do. I want to thank you. I need a microphone. I'm loud now, but I want to thank you for being here. Um, the residents in this area, if I had not been hearing from residents, I would have known. Um, and that is that is a county issue that we're looking at and when i some of these things don't come to the board of county commissioners even if they are a very concerned residents this meeting is for you all um and for your time to try to understand the process i asked for continuance last meeting because i didn't understand this i had very little history of what the original agreements look like what the documentations look like and um you know, we're going back in to the Board of Commission meeting, so I want to make sure I understand where the community is going back in um, to the next meeting. But it is a, um, it's been a little bit of a frustrating process for me as a county commissioner, so I can only imagine what it feels like to you, because um, it feels like the community ends up being penalized for the sale of a development, you know, 
for both sides of this, right? Because there are people who thought they were getting one thing and they got another. There are people out there who were told something was coming and then something else came. So what I see as my job here is to try to make sure I'm hearing you and I'm not being conduit of the information I get. And that within the boundaries of the wall, we make sure that everyone's rights are upheld. And at the end of the day, that we try to make sure um, that we're getting all that communication done in a timely way so that there isn't um, damage to any of the parties or the body of water, which I think very seriously. I want to let you know, and this is this is my feeling about this. So if this is something that you know we can have a different committee meeting, um, and we can ask uh, Environmental Protection Department here. A mitigation credit doesn't do anything to benefit the body of water that is being impacted by the dump or by the, um, the conservation area impact. Um, in this so, case, you're soft yeah. spoken. <laughs> so, so uh, did anybody hear the question? Yep. Okay. Mitigation credit is being I'm just going to be really honest. <laughs> Sorry, no offense. It feels like a shell game, please. I feel like, I don't know where that's going. I know you're taking this here, and I understand if there's something good happening out there to a wetland, that's fantastic. But what's going to happen to this ecosystem right here? And that, that was my concern going in, and that continues to be. So hopefully we can try to understand a little better and, and, um, and you know, moving forward, knowing that you all at least understand what my concerns are as we can work together. Um, thank you, Commissioner. So um, mitigation credits was a system uh, devised by our Florida leadership uh, and voted into um, statute. Uh, and so what it does is um, for a project that has an impact within a certain watershed, which a watershed is where all of the water um, in a geographic area, usually bounded by here in Florida, it's very tiny changes in elevation. Um, but essentially, it's it's a large bowl. It's not round. Uh, here in Florida, there are all kinds of crazy shapes. But um, U.S. Geological Service and other agencies work to provide maps of um, watersheds where water essentially is all draining into one central location. So mitigation banks are developed are are swamp areas somewhere out in rural areas typically um, where they. Uh, the landowner, the mitigation uh, bank owner, um, does certain activities to increase the quality of the wetlands out there. Usually they are degraded by agricultural practices over time. So cattle ranching or citrus or uh, something like that, uh, where they, they are exempt from wetland rules or maybe they started modifying the land, you know, many, many decades ago when there were not uh, rules in place. Um, ag activities are usually exempt in the first place. But they decide that, hey, we're going to create a mitigation bank that goes through a process with the state or the, uh, or the Army Corps of Engineers at the federal level um, to improve the wetlands in that uh, mitigation bank's property. Uh, and they create some functional lift, is what it's called. And so they begin to sell those credits to people that are within the watershed who have a project that is going to incur some wetland impacts. So the, the market sets the value of each credit. And um, so on this project, as I mentioned, there was um, three, three, four acres of class three wetland impact just to build the subdivision. And so they preserved some wetlands on site, which gave them a little bit of functional credit. And then they didn't have quite enough to um, make everything tally uh, with no net functional loss of wetlands. So they bought a little bit of credit to make up the difference. And so what they're proposing is to buy some more credits to offset um, the slight impact from putting a dock through wetlands. And, and something I didn't mention is that our, our dock code requires um, the boardwalks to the wetlands to be elevated three feet above the ground surface. And that's to let some wildlife um, be able to get under the dock as well as sunlight to get under the dock so that there's very little um, disturbance from a dock that is built properly in compliance with code as it goes through wetlands. So I hope that answers the question. It's a complicated, mitigation banking is a complicated concept. Um, so I, the, the short, simple answer is 
credits benefit the, the watershed as a whole, um, but unless they are comprised of the lake on which an impact is occurring, then yeah, they wouldn't have a direct um, benefit to that lake itself. 